Hey, how's it going guys? Today I'm checking out this Alcatel One Touch Pixie Eclipse smartphone available for $10 at Walmart. Now, the only downside at first off is that this is a prepaid smartphone. It only works with Straight Talk Wireless. But besides that, for $10, you get a four inch touchscreen, Android 4.4 KitKat, four gigs of memory, they say, which is storage, not RAM, a two megapixel camera, which is really low, then, uh, of course, it says Wi-Fi. On the back, it talks about the no contract, no overage charges, and the phone isn't capable of being unlocked like it states. And inside, you get more of the information about the refills and the options you have. 30-day contract filling with 10 gigabytes of data or 5 gigs. We've got some more specs down here. One of the more notable things is that it does have a micro SD card slot that supports up to 32 gigs. And then battery talk time is up to 11 hours, but we'll see how that goes. And internal memory is only four gigs. It's gonna be less than that with KitKat installed and everything. Box, you get the phone itself, the battery cover or back cover, if you wanna call it. It's just made of plastic, hard plastic there. Terms and condition services, a quick start guide, the battery itself, a micro USB to wall out with charging cable. Then you get some more stuff back here that talks about the home, the plans. It's a small 1400 milliamp hour battery. The micro SD card slot is located right underneath the battery pack. And then you can put the battery in and the case is pretty easy to install too. Seems like so, no problems whatsoever there. Getting through setup was really simple. You don't need to activate anything to use the phone. Uh, one other thing I did want to mention is that I'm not going to be testing out any plans. We're just going to see how the phone operates really quickly and maybe go through a few benchmarks and see how much storage space we have though, which is what we're going to check right now. If we go down here. So there's only 1.73 gigs of storage available, or actually 1.56 now that I see it down here. That's really nothing at all. So if you're gonna be downloading some games or having a lot of music, you're definitely gonna to wanna to get a micro SD card. The speaker phone or whatever you call it, I can't find the right word, it's on top here. The power button's on top along with the lock button. A 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, that's rare to see these days. I believe that's either a microphone or a reset button. A volume controls are here on the side. On the bottom is the micro USB. And then I'm not sure if that's the microphone there. I'm guessing it could be. The back, this is where you can open up the back. It's like the little hole there. And then nothing on the right side. And on the back, you have the speaker. I'm pretty sure this is the speaker and then the two megapixel camera. Just outside and I took a couple of pictures. Honestly, I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't really that much. I don't know what to say. Decent, tolerable. And then I took some pictures here, and apparently you can read stuff pretty well, so maybe it might be good for taking notes on class, because the text is readable. Now on here, I took it, which was a little smaller text, but, but this is still readable, except in some places, like, except in accordance. Accordance does come a little blurry, but you gotta keep the phone still and steady on your hand, otherwise it could come out blurry. So if we take another one right now, it would be on here. And you can also just hold this and then it'll process it, it'll take just a moment. And once it's processed, you can read it like that. But yeah, my hand was, uh, I tried to keep it as still as possible, but it only does so well. But again, that's what you can expect for the camera quality. I'm just surprised that it's able to recognize or be you're able to read stuff on here. But they actually have physical buttons on here, like the home button, back button, menu button here. Instead of just the screen having those buttons or the buttons being on the screen, because that would just take up some space and the screen wouldn't be as big. But yeah, it's just four inches. So I tested out the benchmarks with this app and it does a little worse than the HTC One X and the Samsung GT N7000. I don't know how old that is, but yeah, this seems like a relatively low score. Regardless, I'm not really expecting too much again for $10. I'm just surprised to see that it's at that point. But unfortunately, not a lot of apps are supported. And the main reason is because it's most likely running Android 4.4 KitKat. First time, especially if they have carpet flooring in their house. and if they So it's playing in 480p and the speaker is tinny, but it's a little louder than I expected. It's back here. It can be covered in one finger if you wanted it to. Browsing experience isn't completely smooth, but it's okay to say the best or to say the very least and videos don't really play or anything. I'm using the Oprah browser, so it's really fast and snappier, faster than Chrome would be. By the way, here's all the stuff that comes pre-installed except for benchmark and tuning. Chrome does come with it. Fruit Ninja, Geometry Dash, Helix Jump, 
and Opera Mini. I believe there was one more that I installed. Oh, no, I updated YouTube. But yeah, the ones that I just said, those were the ones that I installed. Besides that, this is everything else that comes pre-installed. So, Geometry Dash isn't running smoothly on here. It's pretty choppy, and that's disappointing to hear, because I heard this has a Snapdragon 210 in here. Now, again, Snapdragon 210 is, what is it, the lowest that Snapdragon has to offer? And, of course, it's old, too. Like, from what I've seen, I feel like this phone did come out a few years ago, but that's just based on, like, the, the searches that I've done, and I've seen that videos came out, like, back in 2016 for this, or something similar. Next game we're checking out here is called Helix Jump, and boy, is it laggy. Yep, it's definitely not smooth. Is it playable? Yeah, no, I, I want to say so, because you got to move this around, and it does become a little fast-paced. I mean, it depends on how you play it, but yeah. One thing's for sure is that this definitely isn't good for playing games. I just made a call to myself just testing it out, and I got to say the qual quality is great. Now, granted, it's text now, so it's nothing special. Uh, text now versus using the regular phone app. It's VOIP, I want to say, versus uh, landline, right? Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But either way, it sounded good. I could hear myself on speaker, and the microphone seemed to be pretty good. It was it was catching up uh, my other phone pretty decently, not too well. So if I was a little more quiet, it didn't catch up on that. Maybe I don't know if it's just, if it's just my other phone. Maybe that's the problem. But nonetheless, I'm impressed for what you can get for $10 these days. Just a average smartphone. Now, unfortunately, it's a prepaid one. If it was unlocked, that would be a different story. But nonetheless, you can still pick this up as like a dud. If you want to just test it out, maybe root it, see what you can get out of it. If you want to see more stuff on cheap tech, feel free to subscribe and leave a like if you found this video helpful. As always, thanks for watching.